biyaya at kapayapaan mula sa Daughters of St. Paul. Ngayong panahon ng pagbibigay handog, nais namin magbahagi ng aginaldo para sa inyo. Alay namin ito mula sa maalab na pakikiisa namin sa inyo ngayong Pasko. Magkasama tayong naglalakbay sa marami at iba't ibang paraan, lalo na ang pagbabahagi namin sa inyo ng salita ng Diyos at ng aming mga pagninilay na para sa inyo at sa buong pamilya. At ngayon, sa pagdiriwang natin ng kapanganakan ng ating tagapagligtas, hayaan ninyong patuloy namin ipahayag ang pag-asa, kaligayahan at pagmamahal na dulot ni Jesus sa kabila ng pagsubok nating kinahaharap. Matuha tayo! Pasko na! Marami sa atin ang nangangarap kung isa kaya tayo sa mga pastol na inananiyahan ng mga anghel na dumalo sa bagong panganak na sanggol. Malamang mapapawiri ng ating pag-aalala, magkakamit tayo ng kapayapaan, malulusaw ang ating takot. Sa ating kapanahunan, patuloy nating kinakaharap ang krisis ng pananalig natin sa Diyos dulot ng pandemya. Ang krisis ekonomiya na apektado ang ating pamilya. at ang krisis ng pagyao ng mga minamahal sa buhay. May pangamba rin na sino ang susunod. Kaninong buhay ang mapapawi bukas? Ngayong panahon, mahasabi natin na narito tayo sa panahon ng kadiliman ng gabi. Oo, madilim at nakakabinging katahimikan. Nagtatanong tayo, nasaan ka, Panginoon? Hindi ka namin makita. Ngunit ang gabi rin ang nagaanyaya sa atin na humimpil at damhin ang pahayag ng pag-asa. Matatapos din ang gabing ito. Dahil minsan, sa isang banal na gabi, sumilang ang sanggol ng ating kaligtasan. Sa gabing payapa, lumitaw ang isang maringal na bituin. 
Siya ang bituin ng Jerusalem. Siya ang bituin ng ating kaligtasan, ng kaligayahan, ng pag-ibig. Mga parol, Christmas lights, at mga kandila. Sila ang sumasagisag kay Jesus na ating tunay na liwanag ng buhay. malaking biyaya sa amin na alayan kayo ng aming walang hanggang pasasalamat sa Diyos ngayong Pasko. Hiling namin na patuloy kayong maging bukas loob. Ito ay para sa ikalalaganap ng mabuting balita ng ating Panginoon. At kung sa unang pagkakataon ninyo na natunghayan ang aming kongregasyon, inaanyayahan namin kayo na maging isa sa aming Pauline Mission Associates. Alalahanin ninyo na sa Twina, bigkas namin ang inyong mga panalangin at hangarin ng inyong buong pamilya. Maligayang Pasko at manigong bagong doon po sa inyong lahat.
and our mass sponsors for today, Annalisa Liu and family, Beth and June Opus, Remy Balatero, Cording Lagunda, Chuck and Marilyn Nini, Joe Beth Ladao and family, Olmilia family, Mr. and Mrs. William Chua and family, Miss Anna Villanueva and family, and Mr. and Mrs. Toshiaki Okauchi and family. Let us include in our prayers the following mass intentions. For the good health and success in business of Annalisa Liu and family, special intentions of Lloyd Emmanuel Opus and Noemi Balbin. Healing and recovery for the sick members of the family of Remy Balatero, Charlene Lim, Marita Omania. Good health of Cording and Felisa Lagunda. Special intentions of Joe Beth Ladao and family, Mr. and Mrs. William Chua and family, Miss Anna Villanueva and family, Eden Fojas. The Doro family. Thanksgiving of Olmilia, Meneses, and Russo families. Mr. and Mrs. Toshiaki Okauchi and family. Lisa Taperla and family. Anna Mylene Lagura and family. For the souls of Sister Michelina Brondial, Sister Maria Giacomina Cabucos, Sister Clemens Rabaya, Asuncion Alcaraz, Claudelisa Opilia, Jose and Asuncion Alarcon, Martina, Julia, George, and Nestor. And for an end to COVID-19. Brothers and sisters, God's messenger announces to Zechariah that the priest will have a son. Zechariah could not bring himself to believe this extraordinary news. The name given to the promised son is Yohanan or John, which means God is gracious. Indeed, the conception of John the Baptist is a manifestation of God's graciousness, which will reach its culmination in the birth of the Messiah. This glimpse of the messenger who will prepare the way of the Lord fills us with joy and gladness, for indeed, salvation is so close. Please all rise as we begin our Eucharistic celebration.
We begin our Eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. God of life, in the child who was born of the Virgin Mary, you reveal to the world the radiance of your glory. Grant that we may celebrate with full and reverent faith this great mystery of the world made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Palestine. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, and terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, you will be child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord stir him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
please rise. of justice them, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abiha. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his division stern before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, 
and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, sisters, and good day to everyone who is joining us wherever you are. Saan man kayong dako ng daigdig. In our readings today, alam kong bida ang mga nanay at ang kanilang mapaghimalang pagbubuntis. But as a priest myself, I cannot help but be drawn more to the priest in our gospel story today, Zechariah, and this unexpected response to God's messenger. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth are described to be righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. Such high praise. Grabe. Can you be more perfect than that? Sana all. It seems the gospel writer, Luke, really wanted to emphasize their holiness. Perhaps this is to highlight how deserving they were of the miracle they were about to receive. Perhaps this is to give us a message that God's intervention into their lives was some kind of divine justice, a reward rightly given to those who keep the faith no matter what. From this, we can draw a much-needed message of hope and assurance to those who keep the Lord's promises and commands na anumang lalim at haba ng gabi, darating din ang umaga at napakaganda nun. Especially in this year which felt like a year of barrenness but I can't help but feel like more than just good news there is also a challenge this year as I reflect on this gospel I seem more drawn to the irony it contains the seemingly profound faith of Zechariah on one hand and on the other hand his doubtful response to the angel Bakit nga ba nagkaganoon? Of all people, it is a priest who should be most prepared for God's miracles. But Zechariah, blameless as he is, was shook like the rest of us. And the angel punished him with muteness. But is it not the same for many of us? We are religious, priests, church-going people. Taon-taon, kinukompleto ang simbang gabi, present palagi sa mga novina at iba pang church activities. But do all these automatically mean that we have real, radical faith? Do our external practices always match up with an interior disposition of trust and surrender to a higher power? Personally, I feel challenged and even exposed by the story of Zechariah because I am well aware of my own doubtfulness and it shows in the way I live my life and do my work. How I pray to God is often how I would describe as being cautiously optimistic. Yes, we pray a lot, but we also work a lot. Sabi nga ng isang kasabihan, Pray as if everything depends on God. Work as if everything depends on you. And that's true. But there are times when what is called for is radical faith. What God needs from us are not our calculated yeses, our carefully measured acts, and human-defined judgments. 
Ang kailangan ng Diyos sa atin ay ang simple at purong oo. And I think that's what separates the wheat from the chaff. What differentiates those with normal, everyday faith and those with extraordinary, saintly, and heroic belief in God. Because they can respond boldly to whatever God calls them to. When they receive God's annunciation in whatever shape or form, when God's plan is revealed to them, at kadalasan ang plano ng Diyos ay mas malaki, mas grande, mas imposible kesa sa mga plano natin, their response is a leap of faith. Bahala na si Lord. Or as Mary would say to Gabriel, Fiat voluntas tua. I am the Lord's handmaid. Be it done to me according to thy word. Muli, sana all. And this challenge, I think, makes us look into the many barren areas in our own lives as individuals and as a society. How much barrenness have we come to tolerate inside and around us because we think there is nothing substantial that can be done? Are there darknesses in our hearts that we leave alone? Unforgiveness, doubt, past traumas and pains because we refuse to surrender them in radical trust to our God? Are there areas in our apostolates and our mission that we are afraid to enter into dahil napapangunahan tayo ng mga alinlangan, takot, at apprehensions natin? What are the barren areas in our society that we just learn to live with because we think it's too big for us to deal with anyway? Poverty, corruption, the culture of death, and selfishness. Sometimes we just say, wala na tayong magagawa dyan. Hayaan na lang natin. At dahil ang ating faith ay lukewarm, dahil minamaliit natin ang Diyos at ang kanyang kapangyarihan, tayo ay nagigiging bahagi na rin ng kasalanan. We enable injustice and evil to destroy lives but by our inaction and our lack of faith. To all these areas in our lives that seem to have insurmountable odds, God tells us, Have faith, my child. Have radical faith. For nothing is impossible to me. That's why God likes to choose barren women. And in the case of Mary, went a step further and chose a virgin one. Indeed, when our own annunciation comes, when God reveals to us the depth and majesty of the roles we are to play in His divine plan, may we be able to entrust ourselves wholly to Him and just say yes. And perhaps for those of us who have already given our yeses to God, may our project in life be to refine and perfect those yeses, to make them even more whole, even more pure, so God may in turn act more purely and holy in us. May God bless us all. We rise for the prayers of the faithful. The Almighty Father's generosity is immeasurable. In due time, He will grant the aspirations of His people. With confidence, we implore Him, Lord, be gracious to us. Lord, be gracious to us. That the Church, the people of God, imbued by the Holy Spirit, may attain the proper disposition for the birth of the Savior this Christmas, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. That our government officials continue to uphold the dignity of every person, exhausting their means to promote peace and seek the well-being of their constituents, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us that parents may welcome children with love and responsibility and help them to discover the will of God for them, we pray. 
Lord, be gracious to us. That the Lord may bless married couples who, like Zechariah and Elizabeth, long for children to raise and love, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. That those who have gone ahead of us may find peace and eternal happiness, sharing in the joy of the Master's table, we pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, be gracious to us. Fill us with your Spirit, Lord, so that we may welcome our Savior with joy and gladness and may be true to you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look mercifully Lord on the gifts we lay upon your altar and by your power consecrate what we bring to you in our weakness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, true Christ our Lord. 
For all the obstacle oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Please rise. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Bishop Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gifts you have bestowed, creating us a desire for blessings yet to come, that we may welcome the birth of Christ our Savior with free and devoted hearts. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. May your family always rejoice together, O God, over the mysteries of redemption they have celebrated and grant its members the perseverance to attain the effects that flow from them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Eucharist has been offered. Go and prepare the way for the Lord. Thanks be to God. brothers and sisters, for joining us again today in our Misa de Gallio. We would like to thank also our Mass Presider, Reverend Father Albert Garong, SSP. And we express our gratitude to our, bene our Mass sponsors, Annalisa Liu and family, Beth and June Opus, Remy Balatero, Cording Lagunda, Chuck and Marilyn Nini, Joe Beth Ladao and family, Olmilia family, Mr. and Mrs. William Chua and family, Miss Anna Villanueva and family, and Mr. and Mrs. Toshiaki Okauchi and family. May God bless you more. And we would like to announce now the winner of our Christmas trivia yesterday. Congratulations to Chona Diaz Severa of Naga City. And here, here is our question for today. In today's first reading, what was the name of Samson's father? Please post your answer in the comments section. Thank you very much. God bless you all.